Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Mark Mendes Painted Love and welcome to my channel. For today, this is not a tutorial of any description, it's no, there's no painting involved in this video. It's just purely for me to touch base, reach out, um, tell a little bit of my story. I have done one other uh, video, a little bit about me, which was quite a chirpy video, I think. Um, but this one is going to be slightly different. It's just because I need to reach out. And this video is going to be mostly about loss. Um, if that's something that will be difficult for you to watch, maybe don't watch. Um, it's going to be difficult for me to do, but I'm going to somehow plod on through this. So, um, my journey with chalk paint, it started 10 years ago, 10 years ago, almost to the day. Um, I found a can of chalk paint and um, started using it, sharing it on social media and positive positivity just came flooding back at me. And I think that was because I was sharing um, the, the love of what I was doing. Um, many of you might know my journey. I am not for, formally trained as an artist, everything you see that I've done in the last 10 years is come from somewhere within. And some of this may make sense as I talk about the loss. So within that first year of my creative journey with chalk paint, sadly, I lost my grandma, my father's mum, who was practically my mother's mum. My, my mother didn't have any parents. She lost her mother at four years old. Another whole nother story um, for another day. And that's her journey, I suppose. But my immediate um, grandma or nana, I used to call her nana, but we'll say grandma. She passed away after a battle of uh, with cancer for uh, three years from 80. She was 80 years old and she passed away 83. And me and Mr. M, and that's also something I'm going to change right here, right now. So you all will know that I refer to my husband, to you all, as Mr. M. And I think I'm going to try and flip that out. He'll always be Mr. M to you guys, I'm pretty sure. Um, but his name is Vitorino Denish Mendes Pinto. And he has been my backbone over the, the last 10 years. Um... We don't so much call him Vitorino, and no one in his family d does. Um, that's his first name. It's kind of a very continental thing to drop that name. His name is Denish, um, and I call him Dennis. And a lot of other people call him Dennis the Menace. So I may refer to Mr. M as Dennis from here on in. So uh, back to Grandma. Um, we did a lot for, you know, as you do, we all rally around Mr. M. Denise um, did his part as well. He spent a lot of time with her and, and absolutely, after not long losing his own mother, he um, he spent a lot of time with my grandma and built a really, really good bond with her until she passed. So we had that first level of loss um, to me in my family, which was, you know, quite a shock and hard to deal with. Um, she'd lived a good life you know, a, a strong, good life and passed away at 83. So continued to paint throughout all of this and just almost six months to the day of losing my nana, um, my father suddenly passed away. Um, it was a bit of a shock. He, um, he had some minor health issues, um, but we wasn't expecting that. So that was quite sudden. And um, I won't go into the details of that because that is, it's, I suppose it's personal, but it was quite hard. Nevertheless, it was really, really tough to deal with. Um, my mum found him in the morning and by that evening he was gone. So during that time of great loss, um, in between his passing and the funeral, I took to my paintbrush. And I'm gonna share with you right now the piece of furniture that I did. I have documented this a few times, but this Angel Bureau was 
um, at the piece that I painted throughout that week. And it's, it was based from some Portuguese tiles in my husband, um, Denise, um, in his, I'm gonna call him Dennis the Menace, cause he is a menace as well. He's a bit of a menace. Um, he, from their family church where his mother was buried. And that was a whole beginning 18 years ago when we met, um, his mother passed away as we met. It's another long story. Um, and that was a tough thing to deal with. So I, I dealt with his grief and here we are just eight years on and he's dealing with my grief and my family grief um, through the loss. But the piece was painted during that time um, and it was based on these tiles within his family church where his mother was buried and my, uh, obviously not yet to happen, but my father had passed and it felt right for some reason to paint this hand painted angel. And somehow I think having my mind occupied, occupied on the paintwork, it just got me through that, that week, that dark spot in um, my life. I, I had a very supportive father who loved me and my husband very, very dearly. Um, they had another very close bond and my husband was there holding my father's hand and my mother's hand when when he passed away. So the, you could already see, you know, this close family bond. Um, so during that period of time, obviously I carried on with painting and sharing my love of painting, hence the business name, Jonathan Mark Mendes painted love far too long as a business name. Nobody can spell it. I have to always correct the spelling. Um, but the painted love is true. Um, it's kind of the love that's driven me to keep on painting and sharing over the years, which has been something quite special. So onwards we go through another few years no big traumas, we just kind of plodded along. And um, and then my uncle, so there was another, I say we plodded along, my uncle got sick. Somebody that was another strong, quite strong family member. And, you know, we we looked after him as well. So there was another another illness that we looked after. During that time, I think I painted towards the end of his life, I painted um, a cabinet with a country scene on. Again, I'm gonna pop the picture up now. You'll all know it, you'll have all seen it. So that was painted. Um, when my uncle, when I was going really back to my uncle, I say I was not formally trained in any painting. Um, he could clearly see that there was a creative side of me. When I was 15, he paid for me to go to, it was only six lessons, but I went to some watercolor painting classes um, and he paid for that. And I sat in a class with um, the, the, the other members of this class were all 70 plus. I was the youngest in the class. Um, there were some men and some women and a teacher that taught me some watercolor painting. Um, so that was the only training, but he certainly knew that I had a creative ability and he pulled that out of me and said, right, I'm gonna send you. And I suppose at 15, it's an awkward age anyway. So it was short lived. So that was lovely. Um, but yeah, the cabinet was painted during that time and it was something he saw and he, he said it, how truly amazing it was. I think he felt like maybe some of those classes were responsible, but who knows, maybe there were. I always remember from the painting classes was how to paint a really nice sky, the colours that I used. Um, yeah, so there was a little bit of training, five lessons. I think I can own the rest of it anyway. So yeah, that happened. Sadly, another loss, a great loss to us. Um, meanwhile, this is a difficult one to talk about. Meanwhile, um, my older brother, I've, I'm only one of two, my older brother, he 
had a relationship breakdown. This is something I cannot go into great t detail and he he watches most of my videos and I'm, I do apologize, big brother. He's called Christopher. If if any of this offends you and I, I, I'm hoping it will, you'll understand where I'm coming from with this. So he had a relationship breakdown. He, he had a life like mine, very normal, two businesses, worked hard, um, four children, three of which was his own children and one of which he raised from an early age with his wife. And that relationship broke down for whatever reason, I won't go into that, it's their lives. Um, but needless to say, he struggled with that. And ultimately there were a few things that went wrong and um, it broke him and he couldn't see his children before long. Um, he tried to take his own life um, a few times, three times. And I'm sorry, Christopher, if you're watching, it has to be said. Um, and that was difficult on me, mum and Dennis because the family was already diminished. Um, I won't go into too much of the personal details. There's, um, I think you'd understand if I said at the time his mental health was severely troubled and um, and I think from the loss of not seeing his children and there's a whole other story but that's his story um, but that was quite a tough time to deal with and me and mum and Dennis was really really struggling with that and coping with his world how his world had changed and how that was affecting us so yeah that was challenging and then then comes another huge blow. We had then a terminal diagnosis to my mother's health and that was a big shock and it was a, a diagnosis with um, no cure and it was a lung diagnosis, pulmonary, pulmonary fibrosis, which is a basically an external lung issue, it basically shrinkage of the lung, which was um, obviously, there is actually medical treatment, and that is a lung transplant. Um, I didn't mention my dad's age. My dad's age was 65 when he passed away. At this point, uh, mum was 60, 60, I think she was 65 actually, when we got this diagnosis. Um, and so yeah, that was a huge blow after we just looked after my uncle, all of us effectively. She mainly, mum moved my uncle in just shortly after my father's death. So literally my father passed away and then in with my uncle and yeah, that was tough. And then the moment he'd passed away, mum had a general checkup and then this was found. So. It was just one blow after another, still painting, by the way. And look, I say it with a smile and still painting. Um, but yeah, mum's health, it, it, it was a blow to us all. The diagnosis didn't look good. And so we just had to, you know, as you do as a family, you just get on with it, don't you? Um, and mum was determined to keep on going. I think I've documented this quite a lot about mum's health as well but for any of you that don't know. So I'm probably missing loads of things out, but nevertheless. So meanwhile, I'm painting, I'm traveling, you know, I'm teaching, I'm still doing everything online. Um, uh, then, you know, we could start seeing the signs of mum's health slowly over, I think it was over, so 65, 60, 66, 67, 68, yeah, over, it was probably, she might have been 64 when she was diagnosed. Um, but slowly, it started changing. Things started changing. Her breathing wasn't good. And then, wham, same as everybody else, another massive loss to us all, and that was COVID, wasn't it? We we all felt the, the brunt of COVID, but for us here, um, me, Dennis and mum, at this point, Christopher wasn't quite in our lives at this point because 
it was it was a difficult time um i won't go into that but yes so covid hit us all and mum had a lung complaint so that was really really tough um what we decided was to bring mum here to our home and spend you know stay together and it, again it was tough i was here at home and Dennis was working, he was part of the NHS, so he had to go to work. Um, and that was always a worry, bringing COVID back into the house. But um, we did two, nearly two and a half years without that happening, bringing any COVID into the house whilst looking after mother. And it was a joyful time, I've got to, I've got to say. I spent lots of time with my mum and got to know her more as a person, not just as a mother. And um, we sat and watched TV for hours and hours upon end and things like The Crown, and which she loved. And we just got to know each other. And I think she even said to me, um, we haven't spent this much time together since I was a child, which is true. You don't get that, those moments. So in some respects, COVID, as hard as it was, it was a blessing because I was able to spend more time with my mother. So during that time, I I did retreat from painting for a little while. People might remember, but I didn't retreat completely. I, I continued to paint and do things for us at home. And I decided it was such a personal time just to retreat from social media because it just didn't feel right. Um, social media is a, a whole... It has its positive sides, which you guys know. I feel so positive to be able to ultimately share all of the things that I do and get all of the gorgeous feedback. Um, and I don't very often get negativity on my channel. I really don't. I'm, I, I'm one of the lucky painters that doesn't seem to be punished for painting over wooden furniture, whereas many people do in this industry. And I don't understand why. That's for a whole nother talk. We'll talk about that another day. Um, but yeah, I basically get lots of love straight back at, at me with these things. So yeah, going through mum's illness as she, towards the end of COVID, it had got to an all time low and um, my mum chose to go back home to her house and we would kind of look after it from here. I think she wanted to give me and um, Dennis our private space and I also think that she decided that she wanted to pass away in her own home which unfortunately didn't happen but right towards the end of my mum's life um, I was painting and this picture actually you can just see it on the wall um, I'll, I'll flag up another full image of it was painted this um, we call it utopia um, it was painted during the last month of my mum's life. So another difficult time where I've chosen to take to a paintbrush. I was going from my studio to work, to my mum's house. It kind of rotating around everything because we was back at work by that time, but with restrictions. Um, and yeah, so I was painting this overall image and um, towards the last part of mum's life where obviously again very traumatic towards the end because um she had to go to a hospice well she didn't have to i think she was choosing to to try and help take some of the burden from from me and my my husband mr m dennis um because we was looking after her personally and you know from everything from personal hygiene through all of her care we did have nurses come in three times a day but mostly she wanted me to look after her in th those private moments um you know just the yeah i'm not going to go into that but you can imagine um i did everything i possibly could as a son and i'm you know i've got to say that uh, that has been a massive help in my grief after mum passed away so I suppose the message there is is if you're losing somebody or you know or if you're not just do the best that you ultimately can because when they're gone it is a, an easier a slightly easier ride when it comes to loss um so yes 
the, the artwork again was painted just three weeks before my mum passed away and she saw them. She, um, I made sure that she could see the artwork and my mum always never told me that I was, this sounds really bad, that I was good at painting. I think she felt like I needed to stay in a sensible job um, to pay the bills. Um, she never directly to me ever said that I was amazing at anything that I did. I don't think she wanted me to kind of, my head to swell in what I was doing. But this last painting that she ever saw, she did tell me how truly wonderful it was. It was the greatest piece of artwork that she'd ever seen me do, which was again now, and I look at that, what an absolute blessing. And the image, it was produced by um, Posh Chalk Interiors as a decoupage paper and it's traveled the world and many people have used it. So every time I see the reincarnation of this piece of artwork, I think of my mum. So what truly couldn't be more special than seeing a, mem a living memory of a link to my mum. So that is kind of personal, but for me, every time I see it, it seems so very special. So after that, sadly, mum passed away and um, I felt, I thought I was not going to come back to painting, if I'm honest. I thought that was me done. I thought I would be finished. But for some, for some reason, I slipped straight back into that routine of sharing my creativity. It felt right. I almost, the social media thing, <clears throat> excuse me, is quite hard um, because I knew that I documented small amounts of that. Just, I checked in with my following you guys effectively on other platforms just to kind of say I'm still here, but not. Um, and as I came back instantaneously, I felt like I would be maybe judged for coming back so soon after something so terrible had happened. Um, I didn't get that vibe, I've got to say. Um, I think people were happy to see me back, but that's probably something more to do with me and how I perceive how social media and how it works. But yeah, ultimately I came back, it was a very lovely warm reception and it allowed me just to kind of get into the flow of sharing what, what I loved. And of course, a running theme, painting for me was, you know, it, it helped me. It ultimately helped me get through. And you can see that story is told itself over and over again. We also lost a, um, a we, we had a kitten and we lost a kitten in that time. That was just before mum died. So there was another loss. Um, she was much loved and yeah, sadly she passed away um, at one years old, which was really, really tough to deal with. And um, mum was still there and she was supporting us through, the, through that loss. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of loss, a lot of loss. And I'm gonna stop, well, I'm not gonna stop talking about loss, but you can imagine this is all spread out over probably eight, nine years and to continue to keep on painting really, really helped me through there. Um, I'm gonna reel back to that loss of that little kitten because that was whilst mum was still here. So we lost her a year before we lost my mum. And that was how, again, I documented that. I, I actually sobbed on camera on, on one of my Facebook li lives. I, I just lost it, as you do. And as you can see, I'm a pretty strong person, but yeah. I did, I lost it because she was so innocent and um, it's hard to lose a, a baby animal, I suppose. Um, so yeah, we lost her and we decided that, you know, we, we, have, we have another cat as well at that point, Sonny, and we decided no, no more pets because it was just, you know, not until we move abroad maybe, no more for us. and. Within six months, it would have been, so that would have been summer and then at Christmas, right on top of Christmas, um, whilst mum was still living here, we had um, AKA Lily, or um, her real name was Madge. Um, sorry about the lighting, the sun's kind of passing past a tree, but I'm gonna continue. 
Um, so, AKA Lily, her real name is Madge. She turned up um, at the door and the story, and you all know Lily, she's been a big part of my, um, my videos. She's inquisitive. She wants to be there in all of the videos. So she turned up um, at that Christmas and mum passed away the following July, just after my birthday in July. So mum was still living here for about four months. We all fell in love with her. She, What was not to love about Lily? She is um, something so special that just turned up and her story was actually her human mother had actually her owner had passed away of covid and she remained with this lady's husband but it turns out that he wasn't a cat lover and i think she came and found us really she found somebody where she wanted to be with somebody that would care for her and enjoy we did find the owner she did have a chip in her and we found the owner and when we spoke to him he basically said she he's happy to leave leave her and let her go and she stayed with us ultimately she stayed right here with us so that happened my mom absolutely adored lily very special to her as well having spent that time she was a cat lover as well we i grew up with cats so yeah, now reeling back to mum passed away. Um, and I honestly feel that Lily was sent to us. Um, she was sent to us through a difficult time. We'd lost the other cat. I felt like the other cat had said, go there. They'll, they'll look after you, go there. And she was a constant she was my my cat. I think you know where this is going, guys. She was. So, sadly, more loss. We've just recently lost Lily, which has been, I don't know why, a really, really tough one. I've been through lots of loss and I understand what loss is. If I was to put it into one word, loss and love are connected. I think they are so closely connected. And the reason I say that is you, when you love something and you lose something, it really hurts. And I think many, many of you will understand that. So, and I know that you all love seeing Lily in the in the videos and I do too. Um, <clears throat> she was a bit of a wild child. I think you all know that. She was an outdoors cat and, and unfortunately we do live near some busy roads but she'd come from the very same area and she'd gone through her whole life with, um, with on, as a street cat. So basically she, she went outdoors. Um, so let's reel back. Again, I keep on reeling back. You all know that I've just come back from America. Um, I've done the Joy of Painting Masterclass in America, which has been a true joy. And that's where my job is so very special to connect with, you know, you guys. But in real life, it's a very different thing um, than social media. And I love connecting on social media. But ultimately, with being with people, it's just something slightly different. So I'd done my full tour, I'd done four states and I was feeling quite jaded by the end of it. It was hard work giving a little piece of yourself each time you did these classes, um, but nevertheless fully worth it. And I completed my final day um, to kind of think, right, now to rest, um, now to rest and um, I'm heading home. I'm heading home back to Mr. Mr. M, Denise, um, to relax for a little while. So I had one night's sleep, uh, ready to wake up the next morning, ready for my flight. And in the early hours of the morning, I received a phone call, which would have been 
early hours, well, early in the morning, UK time. I was in the middle of the night, America's time, with, um, with Mr. M on the phone in floods of tears um, in the car. And I knew instantly, I, I kind of felt it already. Um, and sadly, she was with him just an hour before. I'd seen her even on the camera the evening before. And um, she sadly was hit by a car. Um, she, she definitely had more than her first share of nine lives because she'd been hit by a car in Ju July, actually, the six months ago, and she survived that one. Um, she was an old cat. She wasn't a baby. Everyone thinks that she's still a baby. She's actually 13 years old, um, but this time it was fatal, and I've never felt pain like that. There was two sorts of pain. After all of the other loss in, in, in my life, in our lives, um, to, ha to be on the other side of the world to try and console my husband for for something so special in our life, something really important. And, and no, it's just a cat to many people, but to us, she came at a dark time and she gathered us through that difficult time. And I couldn't do anything. I was all those miles away, trying to still be strong for him because I knew what he had to do. And I, I, I asked him to bring her home so she could be buried in the garden um, next to my workshop because that's where she loved spending time the most, as you all, all know. Um, and I couldn't do anything and other than support him from a distance and then still have to travel home. So wham, another loss. So um, quite difficult, quite difficult in every sense of the word. And I know that Many of you that have followed over the last couple of years, you'll you'll all get very excited to see Lily in the background of um, my videos, which I cannot even bring myself at the moment to look at a picture. Um, it feels surreal to me because I wasn't here and um, I didn't get a chance to say goodbye, which is always tough, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I know that you'll all be very upset for me and I, I get it. And I suppose the video has been about loss. So let's talk about loss again. I just want to go back to the, the love and lost thing. It's true. It hurts because you loved something so much or somebody so much. And um, I am... I suppose living proof of all of those things that I'm still here, I'm still gonna smile, I'm still gonna paint, and I'm gonna still carry on, but it has been difficult. And I'll be heading back to America in two weeks time, and I will do it with a smile on my face, because all of those loved people that I've lost, all of my family members that I've lost, and all of those traumas, They'll only want me to carry on, and that's the truth. Carry on with a whole heart and share my painted love with you guys. And yeah, I think many of you will connect because we'll all have lost something in our life that is hard to deal with, whether it be a mother, a father, an aunt, an, unc a an uncle, a child, a pet, all of those things are difficult to lose. And for me, I've just said to Dennis this morning, I feel like I have to address this. And I think the best way to honor her here would be to address it this way and talk about all of the other loss. I don't know why it just feels right to share that with you all. Um, she has left a gaping hole for me and I make that sound like not as important as my family members. That's not true. I just think she's connected to those other parts of those story. story. And she, I suppose as an animal, was innocent and found us. And um, I had a very, I think you'll all know, I had a very special bond with the cat. Um, I've had other cats and lost them. And yes, it was painful. But for her, this one just feels a little bit different. And I knew we wouldn't have her for long. I knew that. 
I just knew that at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think I look back now and think I'm lucky, I suppose. Having strong faith, um, and this is something that I don't really bring to the channel very often, I do have strong faith. And yes, yeah, there's a reason why she came into our lives. She took me through some of those difficult times and God sent her to me and us as a family and she took us through and now she's not here. I think my mum would have come to collect her and probably her other human mum. She would have gone back to see a human who I know loved her very dearly. Um, so yeah, having faith is important, isn't it? Having faith that, you know, that you can carry on in life. Um, my my brain from jet lag is really kicking in now. As you can see, I'm probably tired. Um, but yeah, so that's my story. If you're still here at 36 minutes on into this video, thank you for watching. Um, know that you are loved. Know that you can go through very tough times and come through the other side. Um, I've been through it a lot and I'm still here and we, we have no other option. I think the biggest thing to do is whatever you do here and now is really important for maybe later. Um, do your best you can whilst you're here. Make a splash while you're here and love the people that love you back. Um, spend the time with them. Do everything you possibly can to, to enjoy the people that you love because it, it, it can be a short period of time like we're here. My truth is I, I will have an army waiting for me. So um, I'm comfortable with loss. I've learned to become comfortable with loss um, doesn't stop the pain. The pain's still there and the pain's important. It's really important. It will hit me a few times. Just eating my morning toast this morning. It took me to a memory of Lily wanting to lick it. She loved toast. She wanted to lick toast. Just wiping the kitchen sides. I found one of her hairs. She, you know, it's those things, but they will, you know, they'll they'll reduce over time those things but i don't want them to completely go because if they if they go that if that pain goes i won't remember what love i had so and that's for the same for all of my family that have now gone i suppose that's my take on it there'll be so much more that i could say on this subject but i don't want to push it i think if you stayed 38 minutes, I'm looking at the phone. If you stayed 38 minutes, then I really appreciate it. Um, I am all right, so don't panic. If you're at the end, I am okay with my loss. I, I you know, I, w I don't love it, but I'm okay. I'm not in a bad place. I'm okay with it. Um, we will cope because there's only one way forward, isn't it? And that's to keep on loving and sharing and giving. So I'm okay, but what I will do right now is I'm gonna send my love. Also, I won't be filming, probably, I've got another America visit, so I won't, I'll be away. And if I can't get any more editing done of old videos, then this is all you're getting for now. Um, but what I will end this video is with um, some, sweet memories of my beautiful baby girl who um, was an amazing model when it came to um, photography. Um, she loved to, you know, she wanted fame. She was one that wanted fame, not me. She wanted fame. Um, so I'll, I'll share them now with you all. Thank you so much for staying throughout this video. 
I want to send you all love. And if you are in a similar situation where you're feeling low, just know that you are loved and there are people there for you. If you need them, just reach out. Anyway, I will see you all very soon. Take care.